Hi, and welcome to the Only Next channel. I'm Allie, and this is the start of my journey into the world of Warhammer 40k with Kill Team Into the Dark. Our last three weekends have been consumed with learning, prepping, and painting our Kill Team miniatures and terrain, all while binge watching a large amount of anime and how to videos on YouTube. And this video is a recap of what's probably around 40 hours of work put into assembling our miniatures, priming, and painting them. If you'd like to follow along the rest of my Warhammer journey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Before our first game, we needed to assemble and prep our kill teams that started with a trip to our local board game store. Hi kitty! Hi! There, we picked up some primer and paints and then headed home for some unboxing. So much. Oh wait, these these are the alien ones that are gonna be mine. We decided that I'm going to be playing the Crew Kim badge for my kill team, which are these alien guys with spiky hair. And my boyfriend is playing the Imperial Navy. I started calling my guys the cute crew right out of the box, so that's what we're going with for now. I should probably note that although this is my first foray into Warhammer 40k universe, it's not my first experience with gaming with painted minis. We recently wrapped up Cycle 1 of Aeon Trespass and started Kingdom Death. But why Kill Team if we're already in the middle of multiple campaign games? Well, we've been looking for shorter games to play during intermission that are more on the competitive side. Not to mention, we've started to get more into Warhammer lore after adding Eisenhorn to our nighttime reading stack. Kill Team, developed by Games Workshop, is a skirmish-style game where two people control squads of soldiers to defeat each other and complete objectives. It takes about 30 minutes to an hour to play, which sounds quite perfect for what we're looking for. After we pulled everything out of the box, we started cutting the pieces out of the spruce. This took us way longer than anticipated, so we ended up splitting up duties. My role was sanding down the burrs and making sure that all of the edges were smooth. I used 400 grit sandpaper and used an X-Acto to help with the cleanup. This was a bit messier than anticipated, as you can see with all the dust on our table. I ended up grabbing an X-Acto mat to help protect the table a bit more, which in hindsight, I should have done that right off the bat. While we were cutting the terrain out of the sprues, I thought I was really clever by organizing and grouping all of the parts by number. But in the end, it didn't save us any time nor improve our process because once we got to priming, we just tossed everything onto a cardboard and primed everything all at once. While priming, I learned that I have absolutely no concept of distance because my boyfriend reminded me multiple times to keep the spray can away at six to eight inches while I found myself happily spraying at four. Also, we probably should have worn masks because wind was fickle that day and I think we inhaled an ample amount of primer. Here's all of our terrain primed and ready to go for painting. Since Kill Team is set in the grimdark universe of Warhammer 40k, we wanted to go for a dark industrial feel where the terrain looks old and worn down. This is my first dry brush session. John, teach me how to do a dry brush. Ta -da! The terrain we're painting is a derelict spaceship with treasures that our factions are fighting over, which I learned is called a Space Hulk. These green containers were the first things that I painted, and I feel pretty proud of them. Cutting out, assembling, and painting our terrain took an entire weekend that we weren't able to get to painting the Kill Team figures until the following weekend. To make priming our figures a bit more efficient, John made a cardboard strip that we attached our miniatures to with painter's tape. Okay. Like this. Eight, yeah, oh no, no, eight, oh, eight inches. After I primed my cute coot can bed, I used varnish on the terrain we finished painting the weekend prior to protect and shield our work from dust and damage since we expect to be handling them a lot in game. 
My absolute favorite part of the whole process was painting the figures. I found the painting process to be extremely calming and therapeutic as long as I wasn't making too many mistakes. I used mostly speed paints for my figures, but also I used acrylic paints for extremely small details, like the bangles on my crude arms. I have to say the main thing that I lacked for speed painting was speed. It ended up taking me twice as long to finish my miniatures as John took for his Imperial Navy. Granted, he is a bit more experienced than me when it comes to painting miniatures. If I had to estimate the total time that I spent painting my 12 cute crew members, I'd guess around 20 hours or so. Multiple times, I painted areas that weren't supposed to be a certain color, which of course the perfectionist and me insisted on going back and fixing. For example, for one of my cute crew members, I did not paint him a loincloth, so he was stark naked from the waist down for a period of time. The easiest part of the painting process, I felt, was the very last part of painting the bases black. For this, I used a slightly larger small brush and just pushed paint onto the base at an angle to make sure that I didn't accidentally paint my croup toes black. As I finished each base, I felt really proud and also in awe of the full process that we underwent together over the last three weekends. It felt like we put a lot of ourselves into prepping the game so that when we start playing the actual game, we'd be playing with Kill Team figures that were uniquely ours. I personally do feel connected with my cute Kroot Kimbad because of the amount of time, effort, and attention that I've put into how they look. Across all three weekends, the two of us put in about 40 hours of work into the painting and assembly of everything in the Kill Team into the Dark Box. A few of my favorite Kroots I've painted are the Kroot with a bow. I love how serious he looks. He's ready to take down some enemies. And I love this guy who looks like he's holding a flamethrower or laser blaster. I gave him kind of an ombre hair that goes from olive to sand. He looks mad intense and I can't wait to move him around on the board. Also, I love my Kroot leader and how dynamic his pose is. He's definitely going to be rallying the rest of my cute Kroot gang. After finishing all of the painting, we set up a Kill Team diorama while we read the rulebook together. I'm really excited for my first game, which should happen actually this week. So more to come on how my first few games go. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget you can subscribe to follow along the rest of my first journey into the Warhammer universe. If you're also new to the Warhammer universe, let me know what excites you most about it. And if you're a Warhammer 40k veteran, maybe share a story of your Warhammer experience or even some advice on what some newbies like myself should be on the lookout for. Thank you so much for tuning in and see you next time. Ta-da!